Hi everyone, in this video we're going to continue our tutorial for making an RPG game and in this one I'm going to show you how to make a Tekken engine so first let's create some sort of Tekken sprites like this right here I need four sprites for that one sprite per direction remember of putting the origin in the same place of the player and the mask you will choose the area that you want your sword to hit okay so now let's create object for the sword all you need right here is ADD and events author animation end and let's put a code for when the animation of the sword is ended I want it to destroy herself And with the player and only the player, the attack goes zero. So when the animation of the sword ends, the attack goes zero and her destroy herself. So let's go to the player again. Step. Let's put some restriction here for the movement. I don't want my player to attack and move. So I'm going to put attack equals zero here and close it so my player will only attack or move when it's not attacking and if move equals zero here i'm going to put another restriction same than above with if not moving this code right here will be running only if you're not attacking so let's go create a second engine First, I need you to show you what is the difference between keyboard check and keyboard check press it. The keyboard check will run the code while you pressing the key, and the keyboard keyboard check press it only runs the code one time after you press it. You have to release and press again to run the code again. Here, I'm going to put the word Z that will be my attack and put a restriction to attack we need to press Z and not bring attack okay the attack is off for attack we can't attack when we attacking right so what happens when we do this attacks go to one and we create a instance that it is the sword um i think that's only well, right now i think it's only it all right and the image index go to zero and the image speed goes to one okay now let's go for our attack variable engine what I want here I'm going to make two parts one for when the player is running and the other one for when the player is stopped pull that here so with the sprite index is SPR player run up with obj sword sprite index equal spr player sword up we're not over yet sprite index equal spr player attack up and we're done what this mean if the player is running up and we attack with the obj sword her will change for the sword attacking up and the player itself will change for the player attacking up now you have to do this for the four directions okay we've done here for when the play is running i think that's all we need yet 
Now let's do it for when he's not running, when he stopped. If the sprite index is equal to SPR player stand, you've got to remember the numbers of the sub images. Zero up, one right, and like this. Let's go. If image index is equal to zero, that means up. This is going to happen like we've done before. The same thing we do we did here. Okay, so when we stop it and our sub image is zero, so we're looking up, the sword attack will be the animation of sword attacking up and the player will change to the animation attacking up. Let's do this again for all the four directions. Alright, so we've done with the player stopping. Now let's close this code and close the major one that is attacking equal one. Now we have to make our player get back for the old sprite he was when he stopped attacking. So if it's over, think we just done our attack engine. Oh, the f whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, bro. Well, that is a very big mistake. Well, let me see here. Oh, I, I get it. The problem. Look, you see in this image index. Let's take it out of here. And they're going to do this. Do another restriction. If is sprite index that means different SPR player stand okay then the sprite index going to zero well think they're going to work now go to the movement and here we're going to do this put a parenthesis in the if movie equals zero and attack equals zero in this kind of code here we're going to put parentheses and right in the side of this one we're going to put or then we're going to put for the attack just like the running but now for the attack or or and or now let's change the direction that will work I got it the problem okay now the changing sprite for the player stand will work on the movement and engine same as the run for the attack the ZOR really means ZOR so I guess it's going to work now let me take a look at the object wall I think I didn't put depth no I got to put some depth in her for the 3D looking, I remove it for making this wall. Now it's going to work. Now it's going to work. So let's put a adapt here in the sword. And we want the sword to keep on the player ever. I'm going to put so the axe of the sword will be the axe of the player same as the y of the sword will be the y of the player and that equal for the 3d looking now we've done here we really done here perfect 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 attacking engine and moving engine and a 3d top down looking the engine is just very smart oh yeah and then don't forget the shadows the shadow is very fast, just make an object for it. Remember that doesn't make so much difference. Let's put 10 in depth. You can put a positive big value. And in this step, you make it follows the player.
that is all we need for a shadow in the create event of the player you go to main one this lamp right here and the shadow okay now let's see if we really done it please please oh yeah look smart very smart moving a shadow right he's down very very good attack moving movements and the 3d looking we almost completing well if you guys enjoyed please left your like for support the channel or subscribe for more in the next tutorial I'm gonna show you all how to make a smart enemy engine hope you enjoyed thanks for watching